Hello, this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In today's video, I'm covering example 6 from lesson 5-2 in the Savas Realize Algebra 2 textbook. The goal of today's video is to rationalize a binomial denominator. So I'm just rewriting that expression down there. So when we rationalize, what that means to do is to remove radicals and imaginary numbers. Okay, so we are removing the imaginary numbers from the denominator of a fraction. That's our goal because we do not like parties in the basement. We don't like radicals down there. So really, the, the way that we rationalize a denominator is we multiply by the number one. All right, because one times any number does not change what that number is. Now the thing is, is I'm going to use a, a weird looking version of one because I'm going to use a fraction. And as long as the top and the bottom of the fraction are the same thing, it still equals one, right? Just like two over two is one or seven over seven is one. Any expression over itself is one. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put the conjugate of this expression down here. Recall that a conjugate is just the same expression, but where I flip the sign in between them. So instead of having 2 plus root 5, I put 2 minus root 5. And let's see what happens. Well, here I have 1 times 2 minus root 5, so that's just 2 minus root 5, because 1 times anything is itself. But down here, I'm going to have to um, distribute. So I kind of extend my line, because I know I'm going to write a lot here. So I'm going to take the 2 and times it to each of these. So 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times negative root 5 is negative 2 root 5. Doing the same thing with the root 5 here. So the square root of 5 times 2 is 2 root 5, and the square root of 5 times the negative square root of 5 is negative 5. Thought I gave myself enough line, and I didn't. <laughs> So now our next step, we always look to combine our like terms, right? So here where I have a negative 2 root 5 and a positive 2 root 5, those cancel each other out. So what am I left? I'm, I'm going to go down a line because I wrote over there. So I have 2 minus root 5 up top. And down below, I have a 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. And I'm just going to take that negative 1 and divide it in here. So... 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2, and negative root 5 divided by negative, root, negative 1 is a positive root 5. So there is our final answer. Let's try it again. So on part A down here, just scooting it to get a little more room, again I'm going to multiply by 1, and that 1 is just going to be that conjugate, so 2 plus root 3. Now this one is kind of for kids because it has um, two sets of distribution, and that can be a little bit ugly. I'm going to try to fit it here on this top line. So 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times the root 3 is 5 root 3. And then here, negative root 2 times 2 is negative 2 root 2. And negative root 2 times root 3 is negative root 6. Down below, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times root 3 is 2 root 3. Negative root 3 times 2 is negative 2 root 3, and negative root 3 times root 3 is negative 3. So then I'm looking for some like terms that I could combine. Alright, we have 2 root 3 and negative 2 root 3. Up here, this stuff doesn't combine because I don't have the same index and radicand on any of these. So they just kind of chill out awkwardly, and that's fine. There ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. So up top, nothing combined. So it's okay to just 
leave them all stretched out like this. All right. Now, some would argue that you could eventually change them, maybe, to, to try to make them look right. And I, I don't really like that, to be honest with you. I, I leave it just as it is there. And then in the bottom, I have 4 minus 3, which is just 1. So really, I don't need to write the bottom of the fraction because it's just a 1. Instead, I could just write that string in numbers and, and call it good, to be honest with you. All right, let's go ahead and try one last one. So again, I'm taking this expression and multiplying by the number 1, where my number 1 is the conjugate of this fraction. All right, so up top, negative 4x times 1 is negative 4x, and negative 4x times the square root of x is negative 4x root x. Down below, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times the square root of x is the square root of x. Negative root x times 1 is negative root x. And negative root x times positive root x is minus x. Up top, I really can't do much with this, except I, I'm getting the feeling that I might need to factor. I'm going to write it out. But I, well, maybe I won't need to factor. We'll just leave it as it is. The reason why I'm thinking I might need to factor is the, because of the 4x is here. And then I know that the x and the root x cancel, right? Leaving me with 1 minus x. And so those coefficients are 1. So usually if you have sets of matching coefficients, you usually need to factor. But notice how these have the same signs and these have opposite signs. That means that factoring won't be used to reduce it at all. So there we have it. That is how to rationalize a binomial denominator. Until next time.